Walking into Action Duck Pin Bowl on the fourth floor of this historic building in Indies Market Square is a bit like stepping back in time. And when you see these pint-sized bowling balls and tethered pins, you might need someone to explain it to you. And that's okay, because there are folks here to help. The first thing you need to know is that you've got three balls per frame rather than just the two that you have with regular bowling. It's a lot harder game. You get your uh, strike as your first ball, spare is your second ball, third ball is only a point ball. Controlling the ball, you know, the smaller ball with no holes, it's not that easy. It, it's just fun. It, it, a lot of people just enjoy it. It's, it's different. This is duck pin bowling, a blast from the past that's still drawing big crowds. In the 20s and 30s, the sport was in full swing. It had a national organization and a devoted following. Back in the day, you bowled in the winter, you played baseball in the summer. So for bowling alleys to gain revenue, they came up with um, what they called penny games. So basically what you did, you could go in and bowl a game for a penny. It has to be bowled on the 10-pin regulation lane. The small pins are on a 10-pin spread. So you have a smaller ball, smaller pins, and you don't have the inertia of the larger ball to get all the pins knocked down that you normally would, so your scores are a lot lower in duck pin. The game is a draw for anyone looking for a unique pastime, as well as skilled bowlers searching for a new challenge. We have a lot of 10 pinners that come in here just for the novelty to play a different style of bowling game. The average for adult scores that I see are usually around the 60 mark. I had a gentleman the other night, he bowled a 86, his very first game he ever did in duck pin. I'm like, that's ridiculously good. Behind the scenes, Stewart keeps the ball return and pin reset system up and running. You roll the ball down the lane, and just before you get to the masking unit, there's a sensor down there. It sees the ball, it sends a signal up. Whatever pin has been knocked down, that sensor knows to pull those pins back up and set the other pins back down and then you have the ball return and it's just a, a shoot with your chains and, a, and a, a lift and it just sends it right up and it rolls right back down to you. Actually, maintenance on these as far as pins isn't too bad. The more maintenance is um, in the computers that, that run the things. You don't have to spend much time here to start wondering, why is there a bowling alley on the fourth floor of this historic building? Back in the day, uh, 1928, when this opened, everybody came to Fountain Square for entertainment. This was a 10-pin um, bowling alley. Uh, Woolworth came in the 50s and gutted everything in here. Linton Calvert, my former employer, uh, bowling family. All, all this bowling stuff in here, it's all his collection. When he found out that this building was available and it did have a bowling alley initially here, I want it, this is mine. The lanes uh, came from um, Lin Linhurst Bowl. All the seating, the masking units, returns, items like that, those came out of um, Schumann's uh, lanes in Columbia City. But for Stewart and Dancer, the one-of-a-kind space and vintage lanes are all part of the charm. That's the appeal of this place. They walk in and all of a sudden they're like in an old bowling museum almost. You know, and yet they get to play around. We've got some regulars. A lot of companies do their team building exercises with us. So, you know, we're used to seeing Lily and Anthem, Rolls Royce, and all those places that have headquarters or locations close by. There are others that have celebrated every significant family event here. And it's more than just a fun activity. Stewart says the bowling alley and the revitalization of the building has led a Market Square renaissance. We opened in 93, I was here in 92, and we were installing these in uh, 1992. So the initial problem was getting people to cross Washington Street to come to Fountain Square, because people were afraid of crime. We came here, other businesses started seeing the, this building expand and grow. We did uh, work on several other of the buildings to help renovate those and get them up and going. Another business would come in, another business would come in. We, we started taking off here in Fountain Square and now try and find a place to set up shop. <laughs> the bowling alley and theater now sit in the heart of a bustling district, offering food, retail, and most importantly, a place to get away. Especially right now, people need an escape from whatever's going on outside. 
and this provides a perfect environment. They're walking into a quirky old bowling alley and a quirky old building, you know, escaping reality and just having a good time for an hour, maybe two or whatever. And so kind of counted my responsibility to help them do that.